see? Look at that. Here's the outside. That's water damage. And then there's also mold buildup on it too. And then that transfers over to the plywood. And I think once I get all this off, I'm going to decide. See, I cut, I cut that off pretty good. With the sawzall, there's a little bit right in the corner. And I thought if I'm going to be short, it's going to be right there, which is fine. Just clean it up after the fact. Now the moment of truth. See that dry rot has transferred somewhat from here that way. I'd have to get up there on the ladder. Man, I really didn't want to take that top plate off. Because the flashing is up there, I'd have to pull that flashing down. Now let's get you up there. Let's get you up there so you can see. I'll keep the camera rolling, taking it off the tripod. See, here's that. Here's that flashing, but, you know, it's a test with roofing nails every so often. One there, one here, one there, another one down at the end. But see, then it's got the roofing material on there, it's sticky. I'd have to peel that off. See, I was hoping to leave all that alone and then put the floor flush right to there. And then I can patch this in with some roofing material that I'm gonna use. Then I wasn't gonna have to touch this at all. And I think I might still do that. I don't know. This isn't, this isn't that bad up here. I just need enough room to take this uh, this plywood off because I'm going to end up taking the plywood off up to this corner. You can see there's a hole right there from before. If I take that off and take the that's that same piece here. Then when I cut a new piece, uh, I can shove it right through there all the way up, and then I'll have to patch it with my roofing material. And I may, I may end up deciding that I want to take that flashing off or I can leave the flashing and just patch it right on in. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to wait and decide on that one. My next step is I want to get this plywood off. So that's what I'm going to do next. And sometimes I have a thought process and then and then when I get into it, when I delve into the project a little bit further, it becomes clear to me as to, yeah, okay, let's not skimp around, let's do it right. Because at first, at first I was even... I was even toying with the idea, ah, oh, that's good enough. I'm just going to leave that 2x6 there. It looked, it looked okay. And if anything, uh, I'll just cut the bottom plate off from, from this 2x6. I wasn't even going to take this 2x6 off. I was just going to cut the, the bottom plate off to there and just patch that little piece in. But it, as it was, after I started thinking about it, I thought, you know what? 
I need to I need to do a better job than that. So that's why I decided to take that 2x6 off. I'm glad I did. Look at that. Look at all that mold and stuff underneath there. And I'm glad I took this 2x6 out of here. I was trying to be cheap thinking, oh, you know, I'll just leave that. And then I don't have to buy another 2x6. But I'm glad I took that one out. And I'm glad I'm t I cut the bottom plate off at least up to there. Okay, so I'm going to clean off the bottom of that. Actually, before I do that, I'll... Uh, probably bend those nails over so I don't scratch myself or something when I'm taking this plywood off. As I'm taking this plywood off it's gonna it's gonna come to me what I should do. Should I take that top plate off or not? Because see over here I've got another column, another iffy column here. I'm gonna take this two by six off there just like just like I took that one off. And I'm hoping that that top plate is okay and I'm hoping this this plywood right in there is going to be okay if I just clean off all the white stuff up there before I treat it and I'm hoping not to have to cut the bottom plate off or the top plate but if I find that's really super bad too then at that point I may have to take that flashing off so one thing at a time you know keep it going on your project and you do one thing at a time and it will become clear to you what to do. Because on this, you see, made the determination to take that off and initially I was saying I'm going to take this piece off too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. I don't think. <laughs> so I got to decide that right now because that will tell me if, do I have to cut this off right here? flush with this plywood or should I take this plywood off first and then cut this back flush with the stucco what to do what to do and this piece here you know it's a little suspect up at the top but once I start taking too much of it off up high anyways there's nothing holding this wall together I'm afraid that I could compromise the, the stucco on the outside of this, you know? Oh, I sure don't want to do that either. I think the first thing I'm going to do is cut this. may not even have to cut it. It might just snap off because it's it's pretty in pretty bad shape. And so if I just beat a hole in it up here that's going to come off once I pull the nails on this and so I'm going to do that I guess now I'm going to pull these nails out of here let's see I know I'm right in front of you but oh, wasn't even a nail. Oh, I thought there was a nail right there. The one thing about fiberglass handles, you don't have to worry, seldom worry anyways, 
without your hammer handle breaking like a wood one. I've broken a few in my day. Uh, I think that's a nail right there. Yep. Oh. I put these in with the nail gun. Whew. Okay, I'm going to pull the rest of those nails and I'll show you. I'll show you me pulling that section off. Don't worry. Well, that's all I have for this time. But I'll be back with more videos.